This bag is full of garbage, AKA my beauty empties. And today we're gonna to be going through this. I'm gonna be sharing thoughts on all of the makeup and skincare products I've used up recently. I will tell you which ones I will and will not repurchase. And we have a lot to get through. But before we get in, there is a sponsor on today's video and I'm really excited to be working again with Dermatica. This felt like the perfect video for this sponsorship because Dermatica is where I get my tretinoin from and tretinoin is the most important step in my skincare routine. If you have been with me for a while now, you have seen my results both for my acne that I've struggled with basically my entire life. Tretinoin has been a lifesaver for that. But also for my fine lines, I am 30 years old and I've seen some incredible results over the years using Tretinoin as like the powerhouse in my skincare routine. But whenever I mention this ingredient, my number one question is always like, how do I get my hands on it? Because it's not something you can just purchase over the counter. It needs to be prescribed. And that's where Dermedica comes in. So a team of dermatologists at Dermedica will prescribe you your personalized treatment. So for mine, this is 0.25, no, 0.025% tretinoin and then 4% niacinamide mixed in here because previously when I was using just straight tretinoin, I have super, super, super sensitive skin and I had gone up to a higher percentage and I just could not adjust to it. So my Dermedica provider opted to go down a strength but also add in niacinamide because it's great for barrier but also for acne and I struggle with both. But in addition to tretinoin, they have other ingredients on their site and other products. So I've also been using their 20% azelaic acid and I have a code, it is Kelly G. You can get your first month for only $4.99 and then beyond that, you will get 10% off your second month, which would normally be $29.95. And I will have a link down below if you wanna sign up. And let's go ahead now and talk about my empties. Okay, I think since we're already in the skincare realm, let's start with skincare. Oh, I do, still, I do also have some hair care in here too. But let's start with this cleanser I've been using. So this is from the brand Prevents. This brand is sold at Ulta and it is a drugstore skincare brand. Well, like drugstore price point. So this is called the Clearly Pink Clarifying Daily Cleanser. First thing I will say for the price point, I think the bottle is very luxe. It comes in a glass bottle. The color of this, as the name would imply, is in fact pink. I enjoyed this cleanser. I'm not so picky when it comes to cleansers, but I won't say this was any sort of a standout formula to me, aside from the affordable price point is fantastic. It is pretty heavily fragranced. I, I'm a little more lenient with fragrance when it comes to wash off products like a cleanser, but I would definitely prefer that it was not fragranced. Okay, next I finished up a Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water. Garnier is now Leaping Bunny certified cruelty free. If you did not know that, that's so exciting. They have been for a little while now actually. And this was like my favorite product years and years ago and I hadn't used it in a while and I repurchased it a couple months back. And this was definitely nice to have in my routine. I wouldn't say this is something I'm using on a daily basis as part of my skincare routine, but it's something on certain occasions that is like helpful to have in my vanity, you know? Uh, what I tend to use this for is like, if I've done my makeup during the day and then I'm going out at night or something, or I'm like have something later in the day, and my makeup, I can tell it's like not quite there. Like I wanna redo it and it's past the point of touching up. It's like, I'm gonna have to do a little more work than that. Like let's say the eyes are looking bad. I will just take a little bit of this and wipe it off and then redo that. But like I said, I'm not using this to remove my makeup when I'm doing my skincare routine. That's when I would be using an oil-based cleanser, but to like touch up makeup, to redo something, that's where this comes in handy. So. I will be repurchasing this. I ran out of this maybe a week ago and I have been really missing it since then. Like there will be times when I have like a smudge or something that I wanna clean up and I just feel like this type of product is the most convenient way to do that. Obviously you could use like an oil-based cleanser but I feel like that gets messy for like minimal cleanup like that. Like that's when I like having a micellar water. I used up a body lotion. We'll keep this in the skincare section even though I wasn't using this on my facial skin. It was definitely still used on my skin. So this is the Summer Fridays Summer Silk Nourishing Body Lotion. I liked this but I feel like when it comes to a high-end body lotion, it has to really knock my socks off for it to be something I would consider repurchasing. I feel like body lotion is pretty accessible at a lower price point, so that, that reason alone, I don't know that I would repurchase this. Also, packaging-wise, um, this just like will not stay closed. I don't know like what happened to this component that it doesn't like click. 
on the cap. So again, for the price point, I just, I would want the packaging to be a little bit more, to hold up a little better, you know what I'm saying? But this was nice, it smelled nice. It left me up with a little bit of a greasy finish on the skin. Like, if anything, I want my lotion to completely soak in faster. Um, so this was okay, but I definitely wouldn't repurchase. I also used up my Peach and Lily Wild Dew Treatment Essence. My skin really loves this. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I have very dry, sensitive skin. And I can get a lot of dryness, specifically around like my mouth and my chin, especially this time of year. So any sort of hydrating essence like this is my friend. The only thing I will say about this, I've used... Like I'm on my third bottle of this right now, I'm pretty sure. And every time the cap will break. I've mentioned before, I think I have like super strength. Like my grip, I just tend to like put things on very tightly. And so it's not unusual for me to break a lid or crack a lid. I tend to do that often, but it more so happens with my drugstore products that have somewhat cheaper packaging. This kind of bums me out that the lid keeps breaking on this. That being said, I do feel like I screw it on very tight because I'm always nervous about it leaking, but I love this. My skin just drinks it right up. I tend to do a couple of layers of this in my PM routine. Like I'll put a little bit on, let it dry, do a second layer, maybe a third if I'm super dry. You don't need to layer it, like one is nice, but layering extra I find to be really helpful. This is actually like, they got me to do that. They had this campaign going on a while ago on um tiktok and i was seeing a bunch of creators do like sponsored videos with peach and lily talking about the seven layer method where you like layer seven layers of it kind of excessive absolutely but i started trying like a, a scaled back version of it and doing like two or three layers and i was like oh this is kind of nice maybe not necessary for every day but when my skin is completely parched 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 in the winter, I'll do a couple of layers. Again, you don't need to, but it's nice. Okay, um, also I have this niacinamide toner from Good Molecules. This, I don't think that I would repurchase, but I did enjoy this to occasionally use kind of in my morning routine. I found it gentle enough. It has niacinamide and vitamin C. I can't say I noticed like major results from this product, but again, it's a really great price point. Uh, Good Molecules, I think they have a lot of great skincare products that are really affordable price tags, so. I don't know that this was my biggest standout from the brand, but I liked it enough to use it up, even though I probably would not repurchase it. One that I definitely would repurchase is this serum from the brand Undefined. So this is their R&R &R Hydro Jelly. This has peptides, glycerin, ashwagandha, fermented tea. This is a wonderful hydrating serum. The texture of it is so like plush and jelly-like. My skin loves this. I feel like it's a great addition to my PM skincare routine. I feel like my skincare routine is really focused on two things, my tretinoin and hydration. So that's where a lot of my efforts are directed. So as you can see in here, like most of my empties, for the most part, are skincare products focused on hydration because I have such dry skin. So this was a great serum. I found incredible results of this. I felt like the next day my skin just looked so plush. I could tell it was very hydrated. So definitely wanted to try. It's a little bit more of a mid-tier price point, not quite high-end, but a little bit closer to drugstore price tag. So you can get this brand at Target. A sunscreen that I used up is this one from Kula. This is their refreshing water cream. It is SPF 50. First of all, I love the packaging of this. It has that airtight pump up packaging, which I find to be not only very sanitary, but also super convenient. Though I will say, I find that some skincare products don't have the right texture for this packaging because some, if they almost have like a film to them, tend to make the cap a little bit dirty. And that's what I find with this. And sometimes even my Skin Fix um, moisturizer, which I love so much, and it also comes in similar packaging, that one as well. I feel like it can leave a crusty layer. That being said, that's probably partially user error. I need to make sure I'm wiping it off each time. But I do feel like some formulas are more conducive to this type of packaging and some are not, is what I'm trying to say. And this was one I felt like the cap, you can kind of see it right here, would get a little bit gunked up. I would have to clean it off. That being said, I really love this product. It is a very hydrating moisturizer. So I would use this uh, without having to put a moisturizer on in the morning. And for me, that's what I like is a really hydrating sunscreen that's gonna act as both but not be greasy or like leave a film on my skin. And it's kind of difficult to find very like cosmetically elegant sunscreen formulas that are going to do that and still have a high level of sun protection like SPF 50. So I did really enjoy this, though it is totally a splurge. 
I would say this is one I would have considered purchasing if I had not discovered the Natur Naturium Glow Serum or the Glow Sunscreen. That one I'm pretty obsessed with. So it does a similar thing to this for me, but slightly better and significantly cheaper. So if I had not discovered that, I probably would have considered repurchasing this. But now that I love my Natarium, I don't think I need to repurchase this Kula one. Another moisturizer. This is the Josie Moran Whipped Argan Oil Moisturizer. This was fine. This lotion, again, it was one of those textures that I find leaves my skin a little tacky. Like, if Tilly's rubbing up on me after I put this on, I'm going to be covered in cat hair. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't repurchase this. I actually didn't like this that much. Another sunscreen. This one I did not like, unfortunately. This is from Mad Hippie. It is the Daily Protective Serum. It's SPF 30 and it is a zinc oxide sunscreen. This left me with a little bit of a cast, not too bad, but I also have fair skin. So I can't imagine what the cast would be like on a deeper skin tone if even I was noticing a bit of a cast with this. The, the texture of this, it's very thin and watery, like super runny. So I kind of thought it would be really beautiful on the skin and it would sit well but I would find I would get a little bit of pilling. It sat a little bit greasy on the skin. So unfortunately this one just was not my favorite sunscreen. Okay, something I love so much, but the price point is ridiculous. So even though I want this back in my routine, I just can't imagine this price. This is the Chebula Serum from True Botanicals. Now Chebula is an ingredient we don't hear about very often. This is really one of the only brands I know of that utilizes that ingredient now. Maybe in the future, we'll start seeing it become more popular, but it is an antioxidant. And this serum, my skin loves this. I would wake up so brightened the next day, my skin felt very hydrated and nourished, but like evened out the way you would get from like a vitamin C or other antioxidant skincare products. And I felt just so glowy after using this and I miss having it in my routine, but it is a $90 serum. And I just feel like even though it's good, I don't know that it's $90 good, okay? This this one little hair, I tried to bobby pin it in, but it just keeps popping back. Get back there, get back there. So I liked this, but personally, I just think it's, it's a little much. $90 is a little bit much, or maybe a lot. Okay, this, I included the box just to show and like remind myself that I used this up and did a... What am I trying to say? I'm, I'm going to explain this weird. Let me start from the top. So this is a moisturizer that I love so much from Glow Recipe. It is called the Plum Plump Hyaluronic Cream, and it actually has refills. So I love that more brands are doing this. This is kind of what the refill cartridge looks like. Comes in a little cardboard box here, and then this is what was in the the moisturizer. I removed it and then put the refill in that's in the same packaging just with a little... A little paper cap on top or like foil you know so i love this moisturizer it is a nice daytime option for me i wouldn't say it is intense enough for my pm routine maybe if i topped it with an oil over top but i actually prefer this during the day because i find that makeup sits beautifully on top of this like it sits so well um it's very gel like as a little scented like all glow recipe products but you know i deal with it because i really really love this moisturizer okay let's switch over to makeup now my favorite foundation the tarte shape tape cloud coverage actually just repurchased this it was on sale for 50 percent off at ulta so i snagged it immediately i have the shade 20b light beige this is one of the most underrated foundations to ever exist. I feel like no one talks about this. It is more of your light medium coverage, but you, you could build it up a little bit, but I would say if you're looking for full coverage, this might not be what you're after, but it looks so incredibly natural on the skin. It has this very skin-like finish. I would describe it as a satin finish. Not too matte though. If you're not powdering it, you could still have some glow there, but if you go with more of a glowy skin prep situation, you can get a lot more of a dewy finish to it. It's very adaptable in that sense. High, high, high recommendation. The only thing is this is not at Sephora. It's just at Ulta. So I wish it was at both retailers, but I just repurchased it for half off. I was so excited to see that. A lot of you guys are tagging me like, you know this is on sale? You know this is on sale? I used up another REM brow gel. I do really enjoy this one. You have a really interesting applicator to it. One side is more of this like velvety texture and then the opposite side you have spikes. So you're supposed to take the velvet side to draw it on, flip it over, take the spikes to comb through it. 
I think this is a great brow gel. The only qualm that I have with this is when it's near the end of its life and it's starting to be empty and dry up a little bit, it leaves kind of whitish flakes in my brows. Like it becomes pretty visible. Aside from that, I like that this is clear and has a really great hold to it. I think it's a really great brow gel. It reminds me a lot of this one from Keys Soul Care, but I like the REM one better. But this one from Keys Soul Care is just a clear brow gel. You do have kind of a mid-sized spoolie. I wish the spoolie was even smaller, but this has pretty good hold to it. I wouldn't say it's like super stiff. So if you have very, very dense eyebrows that don't tend to stay in place, I don't know that this will be enough, but I have pretty fine eyebrows. And if anything, a lot of the more heavy duty brow gels actually weigh my brows down and they don't stay up. So something a little bit more lightweight like this one is actually my friend. So I enjoyed this one, but I think the REM is better. I finished up an e.l.f. Lash and Roll Mascara. This is one of my tip top favorite makeup products of the year. If you're into a slightly more natural look on the lashes that's still very defined and lengthened, e.l.f. Lash and Roll is going to be your friend. I don't think this formula is the best option for volume if that's what you're after, but for the separation and length and just that really amplified natural look, this is gorgeous. So I've used the brown, I've used the black. I think they're both nice. The only thing I will say is that the brown is not that brown. If you're looking for a true brown, this one definitely translates as kind of like black on the lashes. I, I don't think you're really getting that brown pigment super noticeably. Also have a Level Up mascara from ColourPop. This one is a true brown. I mean, I guess a little bit closer to a true brown than the e.l.f. one. This is a really great mascara, actually. It got a lot of buzz last year, and for good reason. I feel like this adds a lot of volume and length to my lashes. It has a natural bristle wand, which is not my preference. I tend to like a rubber bristle wand because I think they give me better separation, but I don't find that this gets clumpy at all, which is what I tend to run into with natural bristle wands. I think sometimes they translate a little bit clumpy on the lashes, but this was a nice one, especially for the price point. I feel like it was definitely deserving of the hype it got this year. I have a lot of hair empties and two actually from Olaplex and these two I used together. So let's talk about them kind of at the same time. So these are two of their treatments. This is zero and this is three. So three, let me, I'll start with three actually. So. Three needs to be used on wet hair. So when I wash my hair, I, I double shampoo. So I shampoo it once, sometimes with more of like a clarifying shampoo, and then I go into the second shampoo. And this, you need to apply on damp hair, but they recommend that the hair is like kind of clean-ish. So I wouldn't say like if you haven't washed your hair in a while and you have a lot of product buildup there, you sprayed in hairspray, texturizing spray, you put gel and you put mousse in, if there's a lot going on on your hair. I would recommend you wash it first before you apply number three. So that's what I tend to do. I do my step one of washing my hair once, dry it out as much as I kind of can so it's not like soaking wet but it's still wet. And then I apply this. They say at least like 10 to 15 minutes, but you can leave this on basically until the hair is dry, is what they say. That's when it's gonna stop working. The hair has to be wet for this to still be working. I don't, I don't leave it on for so long. I know people leave it on overnight. That's not necessarily adding any benefits to it, especially if you're doing like the Olaplex bun, okay? I feel like that's a huge myth that you should be putting the Olaplex in your wet hair and then putting it in this bun and then leaving that in all day. I remember seeing that kind of trend really rise on social media and everyone doing the Olaplex bun. I wouldn't recommend that because what ends up happening is your hair is already wet, so it's in a much more fragile state. And then when you're styling it into this very slick hairstyle, it is like a recipe for breakage. I think you're better off using this for a shorter time frame, but using it correctly to really reap the benefits of it. So I love Olaplex number three but you can also pair it with number zero for more results. So zero is basically like a water, kind of, like that's the texture of it. And I will use this as a way to wet my hair before doing number three. Now I'm only doing that if I don't have a lot of product in my hair. So let's say, again, let's say it's been a while since I've washed my hair, I've got all these styling products in my hair, like we said, I wouldn't, that, that's not a time to be doing this. I would be doing this if I, you know, my hair's not so bad, but I want to do a number three treatment, I will start with zero to wet the hair. I don't think this is super necessary. It's kind of like a bonus. Out of the entire, num 
what are they? Out of the entire Olaplex system, the one that's gonna give you the biggest benefit is definitely number three. The others are kind of just like the cherry on top. If you wanna add them, sure, but if you want the most benefits, I would say go with number three. That being said, I know everyone's talking about all these other bond building treatments. There are a ton of brands that are now doing the same type of like hair technology, if you will. I have not tried K18. I know I'm the last person to the party. I have like a stash of Olaplex I'm still using up, so I don't know that I need to purchase K18 right now, but I've heard great things about it. It is on my list to try at some point, but I am still loving my Olaplex products. I have bleached hair, so it definitely, that comes with a little bit of damage. And this line is like really important in my hair care routine. I've seen wonderful results from it, but if you're gonna get one thing from Olaplex, let it be number three. Like I said, the others are just like extras if you want to do even more, but number three is gonna show you the biggest results. Okay, um, this is from DP Hue. This is called the Color Fresh Thermal Protection Spray. So this is a heat protectant. I always use heat protectant whenever I'm using heat on my hair. I liked this one, it smelled nice. It was easy to use, you know, I don't have too many qualms. Heat protectant is one of those things that like, I don't know, unless I was noticing a lot of significant damage to my hair, it's kind of challenging to say if it's like working or not, but I, I, I enjoyed this one. It protects up to 450 degrees, it says, which is in Fahrenheit, and then in Celsius, that would be 232 degrees. I like this, I always make sure to use some sort of a heat protectant, so I enjoyed this one. I also finished up some Orbe. This is another like splurgy item. I don't think you need to spend this much on your hair care routine, but if you wanna kind of enjoy the experience, I do really like Orbe products. So this is the Gold Lust line. It's the shampoo and conditioner. I feel like I tend to have a couple different shampoos and conditioner in my shower and I rotate between them. Truly for like no rhyme or reason, but I tend to switch it up. I have some that are a little bit more nourishing, some that are a little bit more lightweight. I do have very fine hair, so sometimes I like to switch it up with more of a lightweight shampoo and conditioner. Cause I'm always making sure I don't wanna like weigh my hair down, but these are very hydrating. Smells fantastic, like all Orbe products. They left my hair like super shiny, very nourished. So if you wanted to splurge, I do always love Orbe products, but that being said, like I get that the price point is very steep and I don't think it's necessary to spend this much to have good hair. But if you want to splurge, I think they make great products. Ooh, I used up a nail glue. So I wear press on nails. I've been a huge fan of press on nails for a while now. I can leave linked down below an older vlog that I have where I go super in depth about press on nails how I use them, how I apply them, how I remove them. Like any question I've ever had about press-ons was answered in that video. So I can leave the vlog linked, but there is a timestamp. I put timestamps in all my vlogs. So if you wanna just like, just skip to the bar about the nails, check, check that out, check that out. But the best glue, in my opinion, is the Glamnetic glue, but I specifically buy the individual glue versus the little ones that come for free in the nails. I like having this because you have a brush tip applicator. Oops, see this is crusty because it's like all old and dried out. But you have a brush tip applicator which makes it effortless to draw onto the nail. It's basically like you're putting on clear nail polish, you know? I put it on my natural nail and then on the fake nail, fuse them together. This glue is truly magical. I have had nails last for over two weeks. Once I get to the two week point, if they're, even if they're still on, like I try to take them off, I try not to go like too long beyond that because if there's moisture under there, you don't, you don't want that to happen because that could be kind of bad for your nail. But I have had many scenarios with this glue where my nails have been on past the two week mark and I haven't lost a single nail yet. And I'm like, dang, I gotta kind of like break these off. So if your press-ons don't stay, try this glue. Whew, those were all of my empties. Thank you so much, Dramatica, for working with me on today's video. Be sure to check out the link down below to get your first month for $4.99. Thank you so much for watching, and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.